Today we're going to take a garage tour and I'm going to show you all the cars that I've owned in my entire life. So let's get started now. Are you looking for the uh, best place to find area car shows and events in the Northeast? Well, the YouTube Pack has got you covered. YouTubePack.com has a tab down on the bottom here of its website uh, called 2018 Car Shows and Events. And we're going to keep track of all the car shows in the Northeast uh, that we can. Um, and if you have a car show, make sure you hit the Submit Your Event link on the top. But what you'll find on this site is um, you, you'll find the shows that are coming up. So, for instance, to show you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you think January is a pretty slow month for the car shows. Well, look at all the car shows that we have in the Northeast just this month right here. Uh, there's, there's quite a few. So we're going to keep track of them, and we encourage you to make sure that you submit your events uh, with the link on the top. And you can actually get uh, notifications of weekly car show events by coming all the way down to the bottom of any page and hit that, put your name and email in there um, to subscribe. Uh, one more thing now, if the YouTube pack attends your event, you're going to be able to see, for instance, uh, Vargo Car Show last year. These are, is a playlist of all the videos that I took at that event. And if there are other YouTube pack members that you would like to meet, you'll see coming in, for instance, uh, in January, Automania, I'm expected to attend. So you're going to be able to see which YouTube pack members are going to attend which events there. Uh, and lastly, I just want to bring to your attention that if you would like to meet the members of the YouTube pack, most of us will be at um, Motorama February 17th and 18th. It'll be our first major appearance together, and we look forward to seeing you there. All right, so today we're going to talk about all the car shows that are all the cars that I have had um, during my lifetime. Um, I've had a few, quite a few, and we are going to, and I'm going to show you what those cars are. Um, I've had a lot and I'll be honest with you. Some of these cars, I did not have very long. Most of them I did not have very long. So, um, just to kind of give you a, a look into what it is, there's going to be cars that I talk about and I discuss and I tell you some stories about, and there'll be cars that, yeah, they were, they had a good inspection sticker, and that's why I bought them cheap. Um, so sit back, enjoy, and at the end of the video, I want you to come down and tell me what your favorite car was. So make sure you comment your favorite car, and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's get started. Um, my first car was a 1976 Camaro LT. Now, this car was, uh, this is the one that got me started on Camaros. I mean, it was my first car. It meant a lot to me. Um, you know, it's really why I have a Camaro today is because it's my first car. Now, the car, it was what they called bright orange. It was like a hugger orange. And I picked it up on Halloween in 1988. So when you're a new driver, you are you have what we call in Pennsylvania Cinderella license and at that time it was midnight you were not allowed to drive after midnight unless you were coming home from work that was the only exception or one of the few only exceptions um and this car got the name the pumpkin <clears throat> as you can imagine it was orange I picked it up on Halloween and I had what was commonly referred to as a Cinderella license so yeah this it stuck this car is forever known as the pumpkin um, had this car through high school. It was one of my favorite cars. Now, some story. I have a lot of stories about this car, but what I want, the one I'm going to share with you is uh, the the buying it. What what was happened? What you know, the condition was in when we bought it. Now it looked pretty good, um, but it had some issues. The engine was not in the best shape. Um, 
the door latch would you hit a bump it would come undone so it hit that first you know it's not shut all the way and then it would actually open on your second bump so um we had some things to fix with it that we knew right off the get get go so my dad and i we we bought it and we took it to a friend of my dad's who fixed the car uh we rebuilt the engine we serviced the transmission uh, air shocks were put on the back because it, it, it sagged. That was very common with those cars is that the back end would sag. So you'd put air shocks on them so that you could lift it up a little bit. It didn't have the Z28 rear spoiler. So that sag was very prominent. Um, we put, it had uh, white wall tire, or not white wall, but it had the white strip on it. Um, we got new tires and put the raised white letters on it and we fixed the door handle um but we didn't do all that stuff right away uh, of course you know you get the car you, i drove it for a while in the condition it was and some of the things i had to do was i had a bungee cord going from yeah, to describe those seats back then the mechanism which allowed you to move the, the seat forward and back the bottom part of the seat had these like frankenstein bolts on the side of it and I took a bungee cord and hooked it to one and put it in the door lock of the other so that when the door opened, it wouldn't open all the way and I could grab it and shut it. It wouldn't go into traffic and things like that. So, yeah, I, I had to do some uh, things to, to get that car running. Um, but it is it was a great car for um, for my first car. Uh, it was, you know, it was a V8 with the 305 and, and there was some. There was some speculation as to what was in it. They weren't really sure. They were saying th 305 came in the car, but the p person we bought it off of said it was a 307. I, I, I think it was just a 305. I really didn't know much about cars at that time period. But um, one of my favorite cars, I the car has been scrapped. I know that. I, I know where it went after me and what happened and things like that. Um, essentially I, I sold it to a really good friend of mine who was going to fix it up and, um, in the process of fixing up, his dad just said no more. And, you know, I think he drove it on the road two or three times and that is it. Um, and it got scrapped. So unfortunately that car is no more, but, um, the, when I got rid of this, I was kind of getting out on my own, and I, I needed a car that was just a car. I, you know, this was a time in my life where I was just out of high school. I didn't have a great job. I just had it, you know, I was just, you know, kind of making ends meet and stuff, and I just needed a cheap car, and I didn't have credit at the time. Anyway, so I ended up going out and purchasing an 81 Honda Civic. Four-door. It was, I didn't have it very long. It was just a cheap car. I had it for a while, but I mean, it was just a cheap car for me. I didn't care that much about it. Um, didn't do any modifications. And this was a time period I did not do any modifications to my car. It was a series of inexpensive cars. I was in my late teens. I just needed cars that were cheap and in good shape. I mean, typically the cars I bought were a couple hundred dollars and... I wasn't going to put more into the car than I spent for it for repairs. I just drove it till it died kind of thing. It was cheaper than, a, you know, I'd spend like $500 for this car and drive it for a year, if that. Um, I'm not saying it's the, in hindsight, it's the way I would want to do it again, but it's what I did at the time. Then this car died and I needed another car. And at this time I was working at a uh, car dealership. And they were trading in a vehicle. Now, that last car and this one, these are not my actual cars. The Camaro was a picture of my actual car. I tried to find a bunch of pictures that really were close to the same. Um, so this got traded in. It was a 76 Pontiac Sunfire. And um, it, the, it had a good inspection sticker. Couldn't pass inspection, but it had a good sticker. And I paid $150 for it. So for $150, I had like 10 months that I could drive this car for. So that's how I ended up with that car. <laughs> um, next, now I was starting to make a little bit of money. And I had some, I went out and I bought a 1976 Alfa Romeo Spider. 
Now, this car I had for about a summer. Um, it had, I started having some problems with it and I took it back to where I bought it. I knew the guy, I bought it from the dealership I bought it from and I ended up trading it back in and I would have loved to have kept it, but it was given. So he said in the end, I found out it was minor problems and I would have loved to have kept this car, but I, I just couldn't because I needed a car. I needed to get back and forth to work. Uh, I was on my own. I didn't have any way to do it. So Unfortunately, I only had this for summer, but I really enjoyed it. And my, my uh, youngest daughter, sh I was showing her these cars uh, the other day, and she said, yeah, you know, it looks like the car you, you have now, the bug. He goes, it looks like a smushed-down bug made into a convertible. And, you know, it's kind of right. It kind of does have that kind of look to it. But this is the only Italian sports car I've ever owned. Uh, next, um, when that went bad, I had to get something on that dealership lot. Now, this is probably the car that is not even close. Now, that Alfa Romeo is exactly, that. that is a dead give ringer to the one that I had. This is not. Um, they had, I bought a 77 Pontiac Formula, not the Trans Am. However, it did have the shaker hood. It did have, the, the only thing difference was is that it didn't have um, these uh, panels on the back here where the, um, the, the fender flares in the back, um, and it was teal. Um, but I, I believe it had the side vents. It might not have. Um, and it did have the shaker hood for sure. It did not have T tops, but other than that, the car was the same. I mean, whoever had it, it had a, um, a 350 rework to a 396, bored out to a 396 and a 780 CFM Holly double pumper carburetor. Now, if you don't know what that is, carburetors back in the day had there was a four there were two barrel and four barrels and then there were multiple carburetors but basically it was a two barrel four barrel um the four barrel carburetor has you know there's four holes basically in there and two were larger than the other two in most cases it was a 600 uh, cfm carburetor and that was the typical size um this uh carburetor that i had the 780 cfm had four the same size the larger size and it had two fuel lines going into it this car was a beast um eventually i had to get rid of it because it couldn't pass inspection because the frame was rotted out and i was pretty much screwed so this car went away um i had to take it back i took it back to that same person the alpha this and finally um this next car was what I ended up buying from him because it's the only thing on the lot that I was interested in. And that's exactly what it looked like. It was a crap brown Celica. I hated it. I mean, it was, it was, it was a Celica. So it was better than what some of the other, it was the only sporty thing he had on the lot, but it was brown and it was just like driving a turd, man. I, I, <laughs> I was just stuck with what he had. Didn't like it, but Oh, well, now, again, all of these cars so far, I've not done any modifications to, I mean, the, the Firebird didn't need it at all. So, um, I didn't have to do anything to that. And then when it had problems, I, I could get rid of it. Um, but I finally got rid of this and it died. <laughs> I needed a car and my father's, uh, guy that worked in my father's business was selling a horizon and it was cheap. Again, it was, I needed a car. This was cheap. So I bought this car to save some money. Um, drove it for a little while. Got good gas mileage. Um, you know, pretty well. Um, so I got rid of that and I finally was starting to get a little bit where I could get a nicer car. So I got a Mercury. This was an eight, early eighties, like an 81, 82 Mercury Capri, which was essentially a rebadged Mustang. Now, again, now this is way off for my car. This My car was maroon, but this is where I started modifying cars again. Had this car for a while. Uh, this car had um, the louver, the 80-style louvers on the back. It had... Um, uh, I put wheels and tires on it, raised white letters and American racing wheels. That's uh, kind of what I could afford at that point. And, yeah, that was popular at that time, too. Um, stereo, 
cell phone <laughs> actually had a car phone in this car so those are the types of things that I did this car and I really like this car and when I was done with this car I actually um, upgraded to an 86 and it did look like this it was the um, hunter green that's if you can't tell that's that's hunter green or I think it is it was very hard to distinguish between hunter green and black in the shade and, and at night it was only in the daytime you could tell the actual sunlight you could tell the difference um, but it pretty much looked like that. I had a little different wheels on. I think I might have switched over the wheels. I think, yeah, I did. I, I changed over the American Racing wheels onto this car. Headlight blackouts. Um, I think I tinted the windows on this car. This car was good. The transmission eventually went. It got stuck in third gear and you couldn't get it out. Um, and I just kind of, you know, moved on. Had the car for a while. I was ready for something new or different rather and I got a very popular car at the time which was the I believe it was an 86 Honda CRX and I did have the SI version um, this I didn't do a lot of modifications I, I've never done um, a lot of speed modifications to my cars um, I never raced cars like I didn't go drag racing um, the cars that I bought were typically faster than my friends, especially if you take the cor corners into consideration. They they had cars that were straight line cars. They had cars. I mean, I'm still pretty young when I had this car. I mean, I was I was 21 when I had this car, so I was still pretty young. Um, but I uh, loved this car. Eventually, I, I did have an accident in this car, and it went away. Um, but then I was in another situation where, you know, I didn't have everything that I wanted and I had to go out and take out a loan. Um, and I bought, I think it was an 89 Mustang convertible and it was maroon with a tan top. Um, but I didn't have this car. There was a problem with, uh, I had this car for about a month. Um, the bank originally approved my loan and then, um, took it back and I was young. I was 21, 20, I think I was 22 by this time. Um, I didn't like, I had signed documents uh, in high retrospect. I had signed documents. I could have just said, no, I have signed paperwork. You're not getting it back. Um, I own this car, but I was young. I allowed them to get it back to me, you know, and I gave it back. Um, but I was, I really was stuck now. I mean, I had, I had to get something really quick and I ended up buying this uh, Buick Century um, 1970 something Buick Century and it was a bomb it was a beast it was like $300 it's all I had I didn't put any money down that Mustang um, I had to I had to get something and it was just what was the first thing I found and this is was it um, drove this this did not last long it died and now I was really in a bind and I was just fed up. I could do $300 for a, another car and be in the same predicament and just be in this never ending predicament that I did not want to be in. Um, and I'm still 22, 23 at this point, 22. And I was just like, I need to get out of this, this pattern. I need to do something. So I finally decided I could do a $300 car and be in the same place I was, or I could do a $300 bicycle. So I was working in a couple towns away, 15 miles was the distance, and I actually took that $300 and went and bought a bicycle and all the gear I needed to uh, travel back and forth 15 miles on a bicycle. And what I mean by that is, you know, I had a waterproof suit waterproof you know and it was all ventilated and stuff so that you know I could drive in the I could ride in the rain and I had a, a speedometer you know like a, a trip computer kind of thing for the bike I had uh, very expensive headlights for the bike because I worked typically till nine o'clock I was in retail at the time and what would happen is my then girlfriend now wife would usually drop me off before work and then I would ride home um took me about my my first night took me an hour and a half and i said well through shortcuts and stuff i'm going to nail this down to an hour 
one day I made it in less than an hour. And I just kind of fell over in the yard, in my front yard, and just, I, I was booking. And it was it was tough. And it took me about a month to get to that point. Um, but I, I, I don't regret doing it. And it, on average, it took me about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes. So I did pretty well. But, you know, that that's you know, how that happened. And, and one night in February, I was riding home and every night I passed this car dealership and my uncle had a car that he bought new in 1983 and it sat in the garage. So it, he took it out. He used to have 76ers tickets. He used to take it down to ball games. He'd take it out on nice sunny days. Like it never, it saw snow the first day he brought it home. And that was the only time it ever saw snow. And it rarely saw rain. Um, and then he was selling it about the time that I was buying this car here. And um, I couldn't afford it. Just couldn't afford it. There's no way. He, I want to say it was about $3,000 and I, I didn't have it. Um, this is now the early nineties, uh, probably about 93, 94. And, um, he sold it to a friend of my father's who actually collected Packards and he thought he was going to collect it. Well, he didn't collect it. He, he didn't exactly collect it. He thought my uncle thought, Oh, his car's going to be collected. It's going to be in a garage and this and that. Well, this guy that a friend of my father's actually drove it and he hated it. It must have been a midlife crisis. He absolutely hated it. He hated sitting down this low and that kind of stuff. And he traded it in on a Cadillac. So that was October or so, I think. He traded in. He traded in the end of summer. February, I'm driving by. I'm like, I wonder if that... I'm starting to get tired of riding the bike. I'm like, I wonder if that car's still here. So I look over and it's sitting on the front line. So I went home that night. I... <laughs> Talked to my girlfriend, my fiance at the time, my now wife, and we decided to buy it. And it was a 1983 RX-7. It had low mileage. It, this, by far, was probably the best car I ever owned. Fun to drive, the whole bit. I regret selling it. The only reason I sold it was because we were expecting our first child. This was a two-seater. Couldn't, couldn't have it. You know, just couldn't do it. Um, in retrospect, I would not have sold this car. I would have kept it. Um, it didn't have airbags. I could have put the baby in the front seat for the amount of time we had it. My wife had a Honda Passport SUV, so we could have done what we didn't need it. But of course, you know, you're a young father. No, you got to get something more family orientated. And, uh, I sold it. I sold it and I bought this. And, uh, again, all these cars have been representations. Um, but my, my Z 34 looked exactly like this. Um, it was a 91, I think Lumina Z 34. It was only made for three years and this was a really nice car. I like this car a lot. Um, it's kind of would have been the predecessor to the, uh, Chevrolet SS. Um, the car, and then it was a coupe. This was the NASCAR car. This is the car they used in NASCAR for their body style. Um, this, the problem with this car is, is that the engine was too, a high output engine and didn't last. So the, on average, the engines last a hundred thousand miles and at a hundred thousand miles, mine gave out right around a hundred thousand miles. Mine gave out still owed on the car. I mean, it was a mess and, um, there were other things going on in my life when it finally went, but I, I, I had plans to modify this car. It just never happened. Um, I wanted to ram air and I wanted to do some modifications and stuff. The engine was just too high output. Really. It's a good thing. I didn't, I probably would have went a lot sooner because it was already the car. The motor in this car was already tuned to do that. They I actually didn't put this in very many cars. I mean, it was only this and the Lumina Z 30, uh, Lumina 3.4, you could get in the Lumina. Normally, the Luminas came with a 3.1. Then they made the Z34 as the upgrade to it. And then they came out with the four-door version with a 3.4 liter. But it was a high-output engine that just didn't do well. Uh, didn't, it, wasn't, it didn't have the reliability of the 3.1. So they got rid of the engine pretty quick from their lineup. 
So, uh, again, it was, I'm at a point in my life now, again, where a car went bad and I need to just get something. So my father actually purchased this car for me and gave it to me. This was a, a Pontiac Sunbird, um, basically a Cavalier, but it had over 200,000 miles on it. Still ran well. It was the base model VL, value leader. Um, but it got good gas mileage. It ran and got me back and forth to work. And, you know, my wife had a brand new car during this time. By this time, you know, I'm married and, and we have kids and my wife had a brand new car. At this point in my life, my cars were all, um, they were all commuter cars. They were all cars to get me back and forth to work. Uh, we had a car payment of probably $400 a month. And, you know, that, that's, that's where we were. We had one nice car and then we had my car. Um, getting married does that to you. And you end up with your wife getting the better car. Uh, eventually that went and, uh, well, actually that went and then I was working, I was riding a bus back and forth to work and I was stuck in retail in a, a job I hated. And I, but the problem was, is that I didn't have a car to get back and forth to work. I needed a car to get back and forth to a better job, but I didn't have the money to buy a car. So it was a catch 22 and we decided to buy a motorcycle. I ended up buying a motorcycle. It was a summertime. Actually it was father's day. I picked it up. So it was middle of June. Um, by the, I don't remember if it was the end of June or the end of July, I had a new job. Um, and I was riding the motorcycle back and forth to work. I still had the waterproof outfit from riding my bike, even though that was years ago. I still had that, and I was using that, and I was riding the motorcycle back and forth to work. Um, by fall, it was time I needed a car, and I was had a good job at this time, and I went out and I bought a Ford ZX2. And again, I worked like 30 miles from home, so this is a, you know, great I got over 30 miles an hour miles per gallon on this car I mean like 32 35 it was a great little car a little sporty little thing I mean it wasn't any performance thing but again it was a commuter car it was a good one it was fun to drive at least it was a little sporty that I on my way to work one day somebody rear-ended me and pushed me into the car in front and that was the end of that car um but at the same time I had that car I had this car this van uh, my in-laws were getting rid of it and I just wanted a truck to do truck things with by this time my wife had gotten rid of her passport lease was up and we had another car which was this one this is was my wife's car um, when the what the story was is that when the Ford was in the accident I went out looking for a car um, I had settled on I really like the Saab 9-3 I was going to buy that, but it was about $50 too much a month for me. Like my, where we wanted to be and what we felt we could afford comfortably was, um, and the price of that was about $50 difference. And I wasn't willing to jump $50. So we had six months left on this lease. So I decided to allow my wife to, um, get she found a minivan she really wanted a minivan so i let her buy a ford windstar and i said i'll drive this for six months and maybe in six months i'll be able to get my income up to a point where i could afford the sop so that's what we did uh six months went by time to turn in this lease vehicle and i did and uh, i still was not up to the point where i was comfortable spending the money on a sop so I went out looking for cars, but I wanted all the toys and I ended up with a Mazda three, three S. So it had the S motor, the little better sportier motor. Um, it had everything heated seats. Um, it was a stick, but it had the heat, you know, leather heated seats, GPS, uh, the remote door lock and unlock and all that kind of stuff. So the bigger wheels, the Xeon headlights. And I bought this car. Uh, however, at this time, one of the reasons I bought this was now we were expecting a second child and I wanted four doors. It was time for four doors. Um, the problem with this car was it was the first year that this car was built, 2004. It was a black car, black leather interior, and the interior could not, the air conditioner couldn't cool off the interior. I mean, literally it'd be a 90 degree day out and you couldn't get it below 90 degrees. Um, so it ended up getting purchased back under Lemon Law. 
So <clears throat> that car was gone. And there were some things happening at the same time in my life. Um, I had gotten in, I was riding the motorcycle and I got into a motorcycle accident. And my wife was like, no more motorcycles. I said, okay, in that case, I'm buying a convertible. So I bought the convertible. Actually, when I had my motorcycle accident, I was out looking at cars. I was not looking at convertibles. But if I'm not going to have it, I love the motorcycle. I love the open air feeling. So I was going to buy a convertible. Now, the reason this convertible is the one that was picked is because, A, I had two kids. I needed something with a bigger back seat. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is that I had started my photography career. And I needed a big trunk and that was the, so I needed a inexpensive car. So the only, the only cars that I could do here was like a Bentley, a Mercedes. The only car in my price range was a Sebring. And this was a nice, I mean, this was the first generation Sebring and it was sporty. Uh, it was the limited version, but it had a big trunk. It had, um, a decent sized back seat that my kids could be in. So I bought this. Um, drove it for a while. It was a good car and it was parked one day and somebody rear-ended it. We had, <clears throat> so it was totaled. My wife had six months left on her minivan. I didn't want to go out and buy another low end, you know, piece of junk again. Oh, it was, it was, my wife's van was almost paid off. And it was time for me to be able to buy a new car again. We had decided at that time that we'd always have one new car payment and keep it for 10 years. Which, by the way, never worked out, but that was the plan. Um, so I decided to get, I, there's a bus stop two blocks from my house and took me right to work, literally right outside my building. And I'm like, I'm going to take a bus for six months and then I can buy a nice car. So for about four months, I took a bus. Um, and I then purchased this car here, another Sebring. Now, I will never buy another new car ever. My wife, maybe I'll buy one for her, but I, I will never own and I will never purchase my own brand new car. I, don't, I doubt I seriously doubt it. This car I bought in 2010. It was a 2008. Now. The, again, I was in the same situation. I needed a big trunk. I needed a large bag, large enough back seat for kids. So but there were other things I wanted. If I couldn't have stick, I wanted the auto stick transmission. I wanted a hardtop convertible, and this fit the bill. So I had to buy the 2008. Um, I did look at a 2010. I bought this two hours away. My wife was pissed. She had to drive me two hours to pick up this car. But I drove, um, I went to a local dealership and bought, and looked at one. Brand new, this car was $40,000. I went down I bought it online went down test drove before I signed the paperwork look you know enjoyed it I paid seventeen thousand dollars for this car it had eight thousand miles on it eight thousand miles it's not even broken in and it had you know that type of thing it was just ridiculous that's why I will never buy another new car you buy a two-year-old car you lose a huge half the value of it and you still have a brand new car um so that's how I bought that. Now that we ended up getting rid of, um, it wasn't working. I had to sell it. Um, just kind of making sure I made, had ends meeting. And when I got another job, I had to travel. And the traveling I did was up and down the whole East Coast. I was a photographer. I had to carry a studio. I had to carry computers and printers and all kinds of stuff. So I was looking for something that was good on gas and had a lot of, a lot of storage. So I ended up with a PT Cruiser. It was a great car for what I was doing. Um, I took out the seats in the back. I actually just piled everything up. It filled up almost the entire back of the car. Um, and I traveled from literally, I was in from Massachusetts down to South Carolina, out to Ohio and Kentucky and those areas. I mean, I really took it all over the place. It was the perfect car for that. Eventually, I, I gave up that job. I wasn't working out the way I had hoped. Um, and I was back home. My wife's minivan had died. And we were stuck with this, which was okay for around town, but I wouldn't take it anywhere. It was, it was going. 
So I got another job around here, I around my home, and I was going back and forth of there. And my mom has retired, and she had an extra car. She actually wanted to give it to my daughter, who was about to turn 16, but she didn't want to. She wasn't. She knew she wouldn't be able to give my other daughter a car when she turned 16. So she felt, well, she'll give it to me, you know, because when we're down to one car, it wasn't in great shape. So I gave this to my wife. Uh, my wife doesn't work. Um, so it was just if she needed to get somewhere while I was at work, she had something. So um, my mom gave me the bug, so which we still have, of course. And uh, I drove this back and forth to work. It's got 100,000 miles and still works well, still runs well, but I, I didn't want a bug. Um, I planned, okay, well, I'll drive it for until my daughter gets her license and I'll give it to her except for it's stick and my daughter hates stick. So the, um, my daughter drove it. She couldn't get it. She couldn't get it. She finally went out. We helped her buy a Subaru Forester and I was still stuck with the bug. The bug ran great. The bug did, it was, you know, didn't have a lien on it. So we didn't have a car payment. I can't get, you can't get rid of a car that doesn't have a car payment and runs good. So, I was driving this, and uh, my daughter's Forester died. It finally went, it had died, and we were talking about what we were going to do, and I finally said, I'll give you the bug. So we gave her the bug, and I went out and bought the Camaro. And that's the story of how I ended up with the Camaro. Now, it looks like I'm going to get be getting the bug back because my daughter hates it. It's The value of the car is only about $500, but it runs well. I might as well make it my daily driver, even though that wasn't the plan. The Camaro was the plan, but to be the daily driver. But I don't see the point in getting rid of a $500 car that runs better than anything else. I'll drive it and save the Camaro, and the Camaro will last longer, and it'll be an asset. You know, it'll turn into an asset. Um, but my daughter wants to buy a new car this summer to get through college, and you know something like a hundred dollar a month car payment kind of thing, but something automatic. And I may get this back. We'll see in the summer. But so those are the cars I've had, and along the way I've also had a few motorcycles. So I thought I'd show you those as well. First, when I was eighteen years old, somebody gave me a Yamaha Exciter two fifty. Didn't run. I actually, what happened was is the gas turned to gelatin in the carburetor, cleaned that, all that out and put it back together and it got to running, but it didn't run very well. I still couldn't get it over like 40 miles an hour, but it was okay for around town. I would drive it here and there. Um, just kind of something I wanted. I always wanted a motorcycle and I finally had an opportunity to get one. I eventually sold it so I could buy one of the cars I had early on. And when I was in about 20 years old, I had a family member buying a getting rid of a scooter. So I bought a scooter and I was running that around. And again, I was driving junk cars and this was just something I could have and run and drive a little bit of fun. Now, the when I told you I was working, I needed to buy a motorcycle to just get back and forth to work. I ended up buying a Honda CK, uh, CB750 or C, CB750K. And that was a um, a nice bike, and you know I could go anywhere with it. It, it ran well. It was, it was powerful enough to run on the highway and heavy enough to run on the highway. You don't want to run light motorcycles on the highway. You can get yourself in trouble like that. Um, but it was a good bike. Eventually, I just wanted something a little, a little better than that. I mean, that was an old bike from the 70s, and it looked it. I wanted something that looked or did a little newer and things like that. And a couple years later, I bought this, a Yamaha Virago. And this was a 920V, so it was a 920cc bike. And this, I love this bike. V-twin, aftermarket exhaust, loud. It sounded like, you know, it just sounded like a Harley. It was, I couldn't afford a Harley. This was there. Um, I never paid over $1,000 for any of my motorcycles. It, they were all less than $1,000. I don't think, I, I think I paid like eight or 900 for this one. Um, they were older bikes, but they ran well, and they did what they were supposed to do. And this is the bike I laid down when I started buying my convertibles. Now, I've been asked why I didn't buy a convertible Camaro, and the reason is, is because I don't like the Camaro's convertibles. Uh, the Camaro looks better as a coupe, in my opinion. Um, I don't think I would want a 
convertible Camaro. Not not this not the fifth generation anyway, and the sixth generation's out of out of out of my price range. So uh, this is the car. The Camaro is the car I'm going to keep for a significant amount of time. The only way I would I plan to I hope to keep it for a significant amount of time. The only thing that would change that. Um, me doing something would be as if I decided to upgrade to a V8. V8s are out of my price range. Um, that's why I didn't buy it. My car has 32,000 miles on it. I get a lot of crap for it being a V6, but you know what? This is a this is the oldest fifth generation Camaro. The lowest price range is the LS. It doesn't have the options. It doesn't have leather. It doesn't have any options. It's the basic. Um, but it's all I could afford. There was no other Camaro. If I could have gotten, if my choice was a V6 or a V8 side by side and everything was the same about them, I'd take the V8. Um, I bought this car because I like the car. You know, it's it, I consider this a show car, not a go car. The, the things I do to it will be for show. <clears throat> I don't want it to get ricey, but um, I want it to be clean and elegant. And I do have some plans that I'm going to re-release at Motorama in February. We're going to do some work to it and we're going to uh, uh, reveal it at Motorama. So if you're going to be in the area, make sure you stop by and see the new look of the uh, 2010 Camaro. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, and in the comments again, tell me which car is your favorite car that I've owned. And um, Will we see you at Monorama? Comment below. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified when we have another video. And we'll see you next time.